Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Have you ever been in a position where you found yourself questioning everything you once believed to be true? Perhaps it was something political or religious, or perhaps someone you trusted did something to greatly undermine that trust. Maybe someone close to you turned out to be a monster. When I was in high school, my father began what he referred to as a project in our basement. He didn't specify what this project was exactly, only that it was strictly for business, and whatever happened down there was to be kept confidential. It would be off limits to everyone but himself. He even went so far as to have the basement walls soundproofed. Admittedly, I found it odd that his job would demand that level of secrecy. Otherwise, I didn't give it too much thought. Some of my friends at school were into all sorts of kinky and bizarre pornography, namely shock videos like Two Girls, One Cup. It wasn't uncommon to spend time on obscene porn sites in order to find such ridiculous bullshit. As for me, I never spent too much time on the internet. Typically, I would just look up NFL or NBA highlights, but not much else. Social media websites never appealed to me, and certainly not at all the weird shit my friends often looked up. One particular day, we were sitting at the lunch table, and my friends were talking about the latest they had seen in the world of strange pornography. As usual, I tuned it out when they brought it up. Then one friend named Kevin began to discuss what he called the dark web, and what he mentioned made all of the kinky stuff seem tame by comparison. Hitman websites, videos of animal torture and mutilation, realistic or possibly even genuine depictions of rape. He claimed he even saw links to child pornography, although the denied clicking of on although he denied clicking on any of them. I admit what I heard actually piqued my interest. Could such a fucked up place truly exist on the internet? Kevin invited us for a sleepover on the weekend at which point he would show us some of what he was talking about. We all agreed to come over. As he navigated us through the dark web, I saw he was telling the truth. We saw links to every awful thing he had described to us. He stumbled across a random untitled link that stoked up his curiosity. What do you think? Should we check it out? I said nothing but the rest of the guys all said yes. With that, Kevin clicked the link. The screen changed to show us a clock counting down. Apparently we had stumbled across a live stream. When the clock reached zero, we were greeted by a very dark room. For the first 30 seconds or so, all we could hear was heavy breathing. Eventually a small beam of light appeared, presumably from a flashlight, and illuminated some guy wearing a strange mask, a top hat, a suit, and a cape. His voice was distorted to prevent anyone from recognizing it. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. You may call me Hawkins. And boy, do we have a show for you tonight. A pair of helpless victims. With that, the rest of the screen was illuminated. It was a bright red room, very small and cramped. On the back wall, two women were locked up in wall-mounted cuffs. Both were completely nude, one of them obese and the other one very fit. It looked like some stereotypical dungeon in a horror film. As I would soon discover this was not a movie, Hawkins approached the obese woman. Oh, you are one ugly, disgusting bitch. Ugly bitches like you don't deserve to share the world with the pretty ones. He glanced at the other more attractive woman. Am I right? He asked. She said nothing. I have something special planned for you, but for now we deal with the ugly one. My friends and I all began to feel uneasy about what to expect. Garden shears, Hawkins shouted. A second pair of hands appeared from off screen and handed the masked man a pair of garden shears and he slowly crept up to the woman. A pity if only you were better looking, I might not have to do this. Suddenly, he opened up the shears and began cutting into the woman's breasts, leading to a deafening scream from her and shocked gasps from me and my friends. 
one of whom started to vomit. Hawkins went down to her feet and tried to cut them off as well, but found it difficult as she had very thick ankles. No matter, Hawkins said calmly. Chainsaw? The unseen assistant handed him a chainsaw, and my heart sunk. He revved it up and slowly cut into her ankles, leading to more prolonged screaming and tears streaming down her face. The other woman began sobbing in terror as well. Hawkins' mask and costume became drenched in blood. After slicing off her feet, he started cutting into her abdomen, leading to her guts spewing everywhere. One of my friends passed out from the shock and the sight of this. Let her bleed. But as for you, he said moving toward the second woman. Whip. After receiving the whip, he walked up to her and gave her a number of brutal lashings. It was at this point when Kevin noticed there was a message box for the live stream, and people were typing all sorts of awful messages. All of them expressing glee at what they were seeing. Kevin typed in his own message. What the fuck is wrong with you people? The police will hear of this. I saw Hawkins unzip his pants and release the woman from her shackles. But before he could do anything else, his assistant spoke up. Hey boss, check out this message. Hawkins kicked the woman very hard in the stomach before walking over to the camera. Oh, a tough guy, eh Kevin? Gonna call the police on me, huh? All of us gasped when we heard the crazy masked man mention Kevin's name. No matter. I have all the information I need on you. Looks like I'll be seeing you soon. A box appeared showing Kevin's name, home address, and school. Kevin was frozen in terror. Now if you'll excuse me, I have business to attend to. It was here when Kevin shut off the computer. The rest of our friends bailed, but I chose to stay behind with him, even though I was also frightened out of my mind. Fortunately, nothing happened that night. But Kevin didn't get any sleep at all. A few weeks passed and it seemed what had taken place had blown over. That is until one Friday night. I was watching the local evening news when I heard a report of a mass homicide that had taken place not far from where I lived. I was horrified when I saw a reporter standing outside what I recognized as Kevin's house. Kevin was reported as missing while his parents and siblings were slaughtered. My God, they got him, I said to myself. During the night, I woke up to use the bathroom. As I walked out, I saw my father coming up the stairs, looking like he had just finished yard work. His clothing was covered in dirt. Dad, it's 1 a.m. What were you doing? I was fixing a busted sprinkler. At this hour? Why not? Is there some law that says I can't? Whatever, Dad. I sighed. I went back to bed and thought nothing of it until the next afternoon. My father had left the house to run some errands. It was here when I decided to be a naughty boy and check out the basement. I don't know why I suddenly decided right then and there to check it out, and I didn't usually have a rebellious streak, but fuck it. I wanted to see what the secrecy was all about. I go down the stairs and flip the light switch. So far, the basement didn't really look all that different from the last time I had set foot down there. Until I looked behind the staircase and noticed something that definitely wasn't there before. A door. I opened the door and a light turned on automatically. What I saw made my blood chill. It was a room with red painted walls and wall mounted cufflinks. It looked identical to the room I had seen in that awful live stream weeks earlier. In a corner lay blood-stained garden shears and a chainsaw. On the wall next to the door was a desk with a computer and webcam. Next to it was a hideous mask, which I instantly recognized as the mask worn by Hawkins. I heard my father shouting upstairs when he noticed the basement door was open. He came down cursing at me and stopped in his tracks when he saw me standing in the entry of his secret room and holding the mask. His expression changed from anger to shock instantly. We stared at each other in awkward silence for a long time. 
That was until he broke down sobbing uncontrollably. I walked over and kicked him in the face and gut, then walked upstairs to call the police. My father was arrested shortly thereafter. He had soundproofed the walls to prevent the possibility of anyone's screams from being heard. Also, my friend Kevin and those two women in the live stream were buried in our backyard. Their bodies thoroughly dismembered and laid on top of one another. That explains my dad's late night yard work. As to why he took the name Hawkins for his dark web identity, apparently there's a man buried in a nearby cemetery named Carl Hawkins who was murdered back in 1995. The crime had gone unsolved for nearly 20 years. My father confessed to being his killer, and as it turned out, DNA blood evidence recovered at the scene back then was a match. The name Hawkins stuck with him because you always remember your first murder, as he put it. Five years have passed since his arrest and sentencing. I haven't paid him one visit in prison since then. Eventually, he will receive the death penalty by lethal injection. I wish I could say I'm saddened by this. He's still my father after all, but I'm not. I can't believe the man who raised me turned out to be such a vile monster. I always believed him to be a principled and honored man. Obviously, this is no longer the case. And now I am left to wonder whether he passed on some kind of bad seed to me, and whether I too will one day snap and become the same kind of monster. Story number two. A Reddit user who shared the story that happened to one of his friends in July 2015. His friend is a regular deep web user, and he would buy loads of things like stolen Apple products and drugs. One fine day, like usual, he ordered drugs from the deep web. Not from his usual seller, but a new one. He asked the seller to deliver the drugs in a movie case or something that his mom wouldn't notice. One of his biggest mistakes that he didn't realize until what happened next. The package arrived, but to his surprise, inside it there was a bit of paper that read, Something has happened. If I were to send it to you, it could be traced back to me, and we would both be caught. Meet me at the elementary school at 7. We will just do it in person. He went there by telling his mom he was staying at his friend's home, and his friend wanted him to take a knife if things went south. He reached his school and noticed a man in a jeep with plates covered in duct tape. He got down to get the drugs and left in his car after paying him. To his surprise, he could see the man's car following him till he reached his neighborhood. So to shake him off and leading him to his house, which would be a bad idea. He made some random turns, and when he felt like he lost his tail, he pulled into the garage. But the serious incident happened that night. He could hear the sound of a car engine. Two men were seated in the same car that followed him. The driver was a drug dealer. The second one had messed up hair, a trashy shirt, and while it was hard to see, my friend could almost make out a scar from a massive burn on the side of his neck. He was watching them from the window, and the second one often looked out the window he was standing, and he lost his cool. Now he didn't care about the consequences, and called the police after moving away from the window. The police asked him to grab a weapon to defend himself. Finally, he could see a figure coming out of his mom's room with a knife in his hand. With full force, he was charging towards him after shutting the door behind him but he grabbed a pot and hit him on his head. After turning on the light, he noticed it was the second guy from the car, stabbed him in the shoulder with the knife he dropped. Then in a few minutes, he could hear the police siren. Both men were arrested. The Reddit user said, My friend's mom was killed. Her throat had been slit and she had 23 stab wounds and duct tape covering her mouth. The user was charged with possession of drugs and lost his mom because of his actions. He would never buy drugs from the deep web again. Story number three. A real deep web story was written by the Persona Fanboy, which was the experience of a deep web user. When he was browsing the deep web on his laptop using Tor, 
He clicked on one of the nameless hidden wiki links. He came across a website that contained nothing but a picture of a wall. He saw a man wearing a mask emerging from the wall and greeting him. Hey there. Thinking this was a prank video, I just kept watching. After a while of me just staring at the screen, he began to speak again. Aren't you going to speak, he asked. I proceed to type on the keyboard. Not the keyboard, speak, he said. At this point, I was a bit frightened. Who are you, I asked. I'm your friend, he proceeded to say. At this point, I'm scared, my face is full of terror. I begin to start showing my fright. Come on, friend, don't give me that scared face, he said. This is when I got extremely frightened. Just one second, my friend. I will get your address so I can talk to you in real life. He proceeded to type on his computer. Frantic, I tried to close the window down and get out of the video. That won't work, the man said. Before he had time to track my address, I got a screwdriver, removed the back and battery from my laptop. It's been some time now and he hasn't come. He didn't have enough time to get my address. Or did he? Thank you for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos, guys. This week has been a special week for me being able to upload three videos inside of four days. I don't know if this will be an every week thing, but enjoy it while it lasts. I hope you guys enjoyed my new intro and outro video clips. They were provided by none other than Yeah Man TV Productions. He's a good buddy of mine and he's super talented. Make sure you visit his YouTube page as well and subscribe now. Until we meet again, stay sinful.